Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dylan, the Technogiz guy, and today we are jamming this little guy in my server. So what is this little guy? To some of you, this may look like a PCI Express card. Be correct. Congratulations. Go get yourself a juice box. What this is, this is an NVMe to PCI adapter. Now, first off, I would like to point out just how cheap this device was. I hope it works, but it was only like $12 on Amazon. Now, at first I was worried that that would mean it wouldn't work, but then I looked at it. It's a pretty simple device and it's got good enough reviews, so I think it'll work. However, we are not putting a cheap SSD in here. Now, I have a Samsung 990 Pro PCI 4 NVMe SSD. This is just about the fastest SSD you can get. Uh, it's about the fastest drive you can get. I have four terabytes here. This was about $300. Why am I putting this in my server? Well, this is not the first video I have tried to film this week. You see, first I tried to film a video about audiobooks and downloading your purchased audiobooks from Audible. Then I tried to film a video on creating a virtual machine so that I could film a video about Audible and audiobooks and self-hosting. In all of this, I not only managed to find a bunch of flaws in my server, in my virtualization server that runs my environment here, involving I.O., but I also managed to somehow entirely nuke my production Docker server. So now, I have more content to make because I have to reset up all of my stuff. So this is my Hail Mary. This little device I'm hoping is gonna go in replace my aging hard drives that are running in my server, and this will be the VM storage now. Everyone online seems to say that if you can use an SSD, the faster the better for VM storage, especially in Proxmox, to do it. This is about as good as you can get. Besides the adapter, I could probably spend a bit more on that. So we're gonna take a walk over to the rack, and we're gonna get this thing installed, and hopefully it's gonna work. All right, guys, we're out here at the rack. I zoom out and look at this. This is sick. All right. I don't know how this first person kind of viewpoint is going to work out, but I have both hands free, which is cool. Uh, I bought this like cheap chest mount for my phone. It's not the most stable, but it allows me to make cool content. Oh, crap. Okay. So there's a couple problems here. One, this is the server that has to come out because this is the main production server. I already turned it off. This is what we have to install this guy in. For now, we'll put this guy right here right here so that guy's got to come out the problem is is that table is completely full of projects this table is also completely and utterly filled with projects this is the easier table to clean off so i'm going to clean this one off quick okay that's good enough this is not the most sturdy of tables but we're gonna make it work uh the server should fit there i should be able to get this installed so let's get the server out okay so doing this on a phone is actually really helpful this server here is the server we need now this looks worse than it is i can't i can't zoom back out without with the flash on all right so this looks a lot worse than it is those are my camera cables in white and then the other cables are data cables so let me pull the, usually doing this for me is not a filmed event. So like actually filming this is a new thing for me. So unplug the eye track, unplug the two very large copper boys from the storage controller. Unplug the VGA, unplug the keyboard, unplug the three NICs that I have plugged in and then unplug the two redundant power supplies. All right, that server's ready to come out. So easiest way is to kind of do one of these. Okay, so you'll have to bear with me, guys. I cannot turn the flash on and have the phone in the wide angle mode, but basically all I gotta do is just kind of pull this out. Now, this server is not on rails. Uh, it is a server, but it is not on rails. It's actually just sitting on an L bracket I never got rails for this server, and any time I've been able to find them, they were super expensive. Okay. 
and it's on the table. Okay, guys. So, pick up the latch, and here's the server. So, if you haven't seen a server, basically, they are all kind of laid out to force air over hard drives, usually, unless you don't have hard drives here, uh, or solid state drives, or whatever you have here in the front bays here. Basically, it pulls air over them, through these, and then every server will usually have some kind of air duct mechanism to then blow over its memory and CPUs. So this server has two CPUs and a good bit of memory. To be more specific, uh, it has two 12 core Xeons and 256 gigs of RAM. That may sound impressive, but this is an old server, guys. This is a Dell R710 at its core. Yes, I've done a lot of work to it. I've upgraded the memory far past what Dell ever thought was possible. Uh, the processors are basically the top end that you can get for this. There's a GPU in it. There's about to be an NVMe drive in it. This server has been pushed far past what Dell ever thought could be done. That being said, it is still a old Dell server. I am not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure these processors are Haswell. Um, so that's pretty old. Now, what we're focusing on is right here. You see that slot? That is a little PCI riser slot. These servers come with these. So there's one on this side, there's one on that side. That's what the GPU is plugged into. And would you look at that? It's gonna work. By the way, guys, I did actually make sure that this is gonna work. The There is a problem, so I'll get to that. But let me get this installed because I can't really film it with this camera rig easily. So let me get this in and then I'll come back. Okay, guys, we're back at my desk because uh, guess what? The server, I forgot, has long boy PCI Express slots and this is a short boy. Luckily, they included the long boy in here. We're just gonna swap that out with my handy dandy LTT store screwdriver, uh, lttstore.com, not, not sponsored just a really nice screwdriver. Apparently I also am incapable of picking the wrong bit, but that's okay because this fancy dancy guy has multiple bits in the handle. Look at that, look at that. You can store it, you can spin it. If you have ADHD, it's great. Actually, if you really have ADHD, this is what Come on, do it. You can get enough momentum to spin the thing. Uh, the only reason I don't use this screwdriver like in my job is because if I ever lose this screwdriver, then my boss will have to buy me a new one. You've never put a, like a PCI Express device in. Basically, unless it has like ports and stuff, most of them just basically have uh, like a little plate. And that plate is usually held on with like two, sometimes three screws. If it's like an older GPU or like a single slot GPU, it'll be held on by the IO itself. So like if you have a VGA port on there, the screw terminals for the VGA port will actually be partly holding on the back plate. So now that that's in, let's go put this in the server. So basically on these servers, a lot of servers are different, but on these Dells, you pull these little blue tabs, stick your card down in, you slot it in, you stick the tab in to hold it. So that's in there. The caveat that I was talking about is this server does not natively support NVMe. What does that mean? Well, NVMe is kind of in a very, 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 very basic terminology. It's essentially using the PCI bus of a computer as storage. Now, it works on these motherboards, but because these motherboards were put into production well before NVMe SSDs were like a thing, or like a, especially a big thing. Before any of that, these boards didn't know anything about that. So while they do technically support storage over PCI Express, they don't natively support certain NVMe features. For example, uh, you cannot install an operating system to this and try to boot an R710 off of an NVMe drive. It will not work. You have to boot off of another drive. So you can boot off of a flash drive. There's multiple internal USB ports, a couple external ones boot off of a hard drive, you can boot off a network, you just cannot boot off of NVMe uh, when you are using an R710. 
just to kind of show you there. So there's one of the flash drive slots there. Uh, I am actually using it. That is what my Proxmox runs off of. That is a cheap little Walmart flash drive because that's all it needs. Yeah, get the lid on. And now we put the server back in the rack. Got to get this above all the cables there. Try not to snag any cables. And just kind of give her some love going in there. Make sure my fiber didn't get snagged. Crap. Okay, well, that's... I don't know what I just unplugged, but I hope it wasn't important. So I didn't show it because it's kind of a pain, but I got everything wired back up. Uh, the thing I knocked out was just one of the fans for one of my Raspberry Pis that won't focus. Focus. Okay, I'm gonna try to get this in view. Sadly, the rack is a little taller than my chest, so. While it's comfortable for me to stand here, it is not very comfortable for this mount. Let me switch to the R710 on the KVM switch. Let's turn this bad boy on. Oh, -ho, loud server noises. Look at that. Ha ha. So, baby. So sometimes servers take a minute. Gonna go through all its system checks. Kind of check itself out, you know. Remember, this is enterprise grade gear stuff, so they're kind of anticipating that it's going to be running mission critical stuff and do, needing to do it near a lot of other servers, making heat and all that. There we go. Now we're getting the screen. So once it boots up, most servers usually go through some kind of self check. This one's kind of takes a while because I don't actually have it in a supported memory configuration. It gives an error, but it's whatever. I just have to click F1, dismiss it. It's fine. Uh, so it's going to go through, it's going to check the memory, it's going to check the process, it's going to check the network adapters. Once it's checked all of itself... Check the heart, check the... check the... is it the brain? No sign of cardiac anomaly or unusual brain activity. Okay. My boot drive, which is already established. The NVMe should not affect anything. So I'm going to let this boot, and we're going to go to the computer. Okay. My server is still booting up, so you can see down here, uh, bulk start VM containers. This process takes like five minutes, but... While it's kind of doing that, I'm going to see if we can see the storage. Look at that. NVMe 1. Look at that. Wow. All right. Now I have to remember how to actually set up a storage. Can I just add it to this? Zoom. Because that's the best I can come up with. So the drive will probably forever be known as Zoom. Look at it. Awesome. Okay, so VM disk. Okay, cool. So now, after all my VMs boot up, I have to shut them all back down. So I can then slowly migrate the ones that I need to the new NVMe drive. Yay me. Okay, guys. So. One of the first ones I'm going to migrate is this Blue Iris VM. I run Blue Iris to house my cameras. I'm going to shut this down. I actually stopped most of the VMs from starting up. Blue Iris is already shut down. I think that I am able to just move the storage. I'm going to transfer this. Uh, you guys can see it says it's going to transfer zero bytes out of 120 gigs. That is not entirely true. The virtual disk and I can go through and move some of these other ones. Okay, and we're back. We're back. It's been like an hour for me. Uh, it's gonna be quick for you guys, but yeah, moving that VM, uh, moving those couple of VMs took a while. Linux VMs move really quickly. They, once they hit the zero space, they seem to move, you know, lightning speed. These Windows VMs, because of the way they're partitioned, they just don't seem to do that as well. So you can see though, we're booting this up. Uh, I have this set to SSD. This is already going faster, and I moved the camera server as well. I'm not going to show that server for obvious reasons, but I could definitely tell it felt faster. I'm giving this computer a lot of leniency, uh, or this VM, because it's been through a lot lately. Uh, the last couple days, it has been set up, wiped, it's been tried to cloned, uh, or I tried to clone it, 
it has been uh, experimented on. So I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of a, a push, but <clears throat> if it doesn't boot up here in a second, normally I'm gonna uncheck that SSD emulation box because I don't think it's needed. A few moments later. <clears throat> okay, I can't get the YouTube VM to work, uh, so it's probably gonna get rebuilt too. But the camera VM did work. I moved one other VM. Uh, the TrueNAS VM is back up. Everything's working, so I'm gonna chalk that up to a win. So, guys, thank you. That was that was interesting. I didn't know if that was gonna work. I kind of was going on just forums, uh, but sometimes you gotta take a leap of faith when you're dealing in a home lab. So. 12, 12 year old server running a four terabyte NVMe solid state drive. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below, anything you wanna see. If you wanna see me explore anything in my home lab or anything maybe you just want me to try to explore for you guys, drop me a comment. I'm trying to reply to them as I can. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, like I said, give me a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.